Hey everyone, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler, and today we're gonna to continue our series on some practice problems for the GED math test. We're gonna do part two of basic math. So if you haven't checked out the part one video, make sure you go ahead and do that because there's some other examples, but we're gonna jump into a couple more right now. So we have a basic problem that says simplify the expression. And I hope that when you see problems like this, the first thing that comes to mind is PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, because it has to do with order of operations and how you solve these problems. And so with PEMDAS, the first thing we start with is parentheses, the letter P. So I do have stuff in parentheses, so I'm just going to copy down the rest of it and then do the operation in parentheses. So I have 10 divided by 2 plus 4 times. So this I actually need to do 6 minus 1, which is 5, and squared. Okay, now I left the parentheses there just because I wanted to keep it there. Um, you don't have to include parentheses, but it is there. The next operation after parentheses is the letter E, which represents exponents. I do have an exponent, so that's the next thing I need to do. So I'm going to copy the rest. 4 times 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. All right. After letter E, you have M and D, which is multiplication and division going left to right. And so I have you know, one of each of those, so I'm just going to go from left to right and do all the, multi all the multiplication and division. 10 divided by 2 is 5, plus, now I have to multiply, I'm adding whatever 4 times 25 is. And 4 quarters is a dollar, which is 100, so 5 plus 100. Now it simplifies down to any addition or subtraction that are left, again going left to right. Fortunately, I only have one of those. 5 plus 100 is 105, which is your final answer for this simplified expression. So always remember PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and order of operations. Let's look at two more examples. A little bit different, but same idea. Simplify the expression. So this is simplifying roots. And so one of the things that I see happen a lot is that people just want to add what's underneath the square roots together. And unfortunately, you can't do that. Um, you have to only combine like terms. And what that means is the number under the square root has to be the same in order for you to add or subtract the numbers on the outside. Now, obviously, these are not the same. 50 is not the same as 2. But I need to see if I can simplify 50 down at all to get it in a format that has square root of 2 underneath. So I'm going to actually break this apart a little bit using a factor tree. 50 is the same thing as 25 times 2. And 25 can be broken down even further. 25 is 5 times 5, and then bring down that 2. What I'm looking for are pairs of numbers, because if I take a pair of a number, I can factor it out and keep it on the outside of the root. And fortunately, I have a pair of numbers. I have a pair of fives, which are the same. So usually what happens is you circle them, and you bring them on the outside of the square root, and then whatever numbers are left, you leave those on the inside of the square root. If there's more than one number left, you multiply it together. So I'm going to take this 5, I'm going to put it on the outside of my square root, and the only thing I have left is a 2. The reason I'm only bringing one 5 out is because I'm taking, when you take the square root of something, you're bringing one of every pair. Um, and so I'm only bringing one of the 5s out. So I have a 5 root 2 plus a 3 root 2. Now I have root 2 and root 2. I can combine the numbers on the outside using whatever operation is there. If I have 5 root 2s and I add 3 root 2s to them, I have a total of 8 root 2s, which is my simplified answer. So remember, it's only you can only combine like terms when the square root number is the same. All right, one more example. And this one is a word problem. So this one says, an architect is making a scale model of a building where 0.25 inches in the model is equal to 3 feet in the real building. So already I know I have a proportion problem because it's talking about scales and models. If one segment in the model is 2.25 inches tall, how tall is that segment going to be in the real building itself? All right, so there's a lot of key information in this. Obviously, I need the numbers to be highlighted here. 0 0.25 is equal to 3 feet, so 2.25 inches is equal to how many feet? 
I can set up a proportion where I have 0 0.25 is equal to 3 feet. If that's the, the ratio I'm using, then 2.25 inches is how many feet? When you set up your proportions, you always want to be consistent. So if you do the ratio a quarter of an inch to three feet, then you need to do the inches over the feet in the other fraction as well so that you can make sure to get the right answer. So the way to solve for proportions is to do what's called cross multiplying, which basically means take these two numbers, multiply them together, take these two numbers, multiply them together, and set them equal to each other and solve. So 0 0.25 times x, is 0.25x. That's going to be equal to whatever 3 times 2.25 is, which happens to be 6.75. Now you have a one-step equation where you can solve by dividing by 0.25. And so the 0.25s go away. You're left with x equals whatever 6 divided by 0.25 is. So for me, when I see problems like this, um, you know, dividing by decimals is not really fun. Um, but I know that this is the same thing as a quarter. If I divide by a quarter, it's the same thing as multiplying by 4. So I usually do that instead. 6.75 times 4 is going to get me 27 feet. So that scale model, which is 2 and a quarter inches, is going to be 27 feet in the real building. So I hope this helps when you get to some basic math problems on the non-calculator section. Um, always remember to use PEMDAS. Make sure that if you have um, square roots that you're simplifying, the roots are the same number. And when you're setting up proportions, make sure you set them up consistently and you cross multiply. And check out my other videos on the practice problems for GED. We're going to cover some other topics. Thanks for watching. If you have any other questions or you need assistance and you live in the Palm Beach County area, visit our website at GEDS.com to find a location near you and sign up for classes.